and the mom and sisters, they us all pay respects to the Tanajan together. Bow. You understand me clearly? Yes, Tanajan, can, we can hear you clearly. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> I don't know if I can hear the others. So from which countries are they coming in? Uh, so, I can't really tell. So, I think there's Singapore, Malaysia, Australia. Australia? Yeah, so, like, like if I uh, missed any country, you can unmute yourself to maybe introduce yourself and where you come from. No, 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 that's, yeah. that's not important. I okay. mean, if, if they have a question, then, then they can introduce themselves. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I just want, wanted to know which, which countries are present. So, Western Europe, there's no, no one, or US. It's probably too early in the morning. <laughs> or in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, now let, let's first hear the questions that they have there. Yeah? Okay, yeah, so, anyone would like to ask your questions, you can. Raise your hand in Zoom now. Oh, sorry. I think Tajan, there's people from France, Germany, yeah. That's USA. what? Uh, email. Yeah, okay. People from France and Germany. What? There are people from France. Oh, there are Germany. people from France and Germany. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and USA. I mean, the, the people from Germany can ask the question in German, but from France, I mean, my French is not good enough <laughs> anymore. So please ask in, in, in English, yeah? But people from Germany can ask in German, yes? Okay? <clears throat> yeah. So, I know if questions, you can raise your hand. Yeah. No questions, huh? No. Okay, Paul, you can read yourself. Um, good evening, Ajahn. I have a question about the seventh chapter which is the desire to be reborn in immaterial realms. Uh, my question is, if one has the aspiration, for example, to be a non-returner like an anagami, yeah. does this mean that he is still bound by the seventh fetter? He is still bound by the sixth fetter, seventh fetter, eighth fetter, ninth fetter, and tenth fetter. So, I mean, he still delights in form, he still delights in non-form, he, he still delights, yeah, I mean, he still has conceit and uh, restlessness and avicca, yeah? But he, does, he doesn't have that much dukkha anymore. So does um, an arahant, like, if he thinks that he wants to attain nirvana, does, does this mean that he no longer has any of these thoughts? Yeah, an Arahant doesn't have any of the fetters anymore and he doesn't have any Kalesas anymore. He's the only person without Kalesas. Okay, so if we still have these fetters, it means <laughs> we are not at that level yet. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, and don't even think about, you know, I mean, don't think about the fetters, if you have the fetters or not the fetters, because that is, that is not the way to go, yeah? I mean, every, every attainment, be it Sodapanna, be it Sakadagami, be it Anagami, yeah, or be it Arahant, is a very decisive moment and this is a moment that changes our life. Yeah? So you don't have to count, you know, do I still have this fetter or do I have still that fetter? And then, you know, assume that you are that you are this or that you are that. Because this assumption is always wrong. Yeah. You will know when you have you know you have no you will know when you have entered, yeah. I mean, each, each one of these uh, Arya disciples huh, has entered Nibbana, has seen Nibbana, and knows something really deep has happened. He doesn't, when he comes out, he doesn't know that he's a Sodapanna, but he knows, I mean, something has changed, yeah? He doesn't know that he's a Nanagami, or he doesn't know that, <clears throat> that he's a Sakadagami, but th certain things have been cut off, yeah? And this he will know, yeah? <clears throat> The Arahant, of course, will know that he is an Arahant. Yeah. 
he is the only one who will know that he is a Narayan because I mean the the world is free, yeah. I mean he's free of everything. Okay? Thank you. First drive to become a soda pie. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Singapore. Singapore. Yeah, I mean, Singapore can now travel to Thailand, so why, why don't you come and make a retreat here, yeah? Instead of, <laughs> instead of practicing at home, you know, with, with your fridge and your bed close by. <laughs> huh? People think, you know, practicing, practicing at home, yeah? I mean, it does have its value. It, I mean, it is important if we still live in the world. It is very important to practice as much as we can. <clears throat> and the best thing, and I think I, I said it quite often, I mean, if you really intend on practicing, yeah, while we are living in the world, while we have a job to do, then, then we should make uh, meditation our number one priority. So we sh should start every morning with at least one hour of meditation or 45 minutes of meditation. When we come back home from work, you know, we should do another one hour or 45 min meditation, minute meditation, yeah? And after that, preferably do the daily reflection, yeah? What happened during the day? What did I think? What did I do? What did I say? And so on. And what was the result of this? And before you go to bed, have another uh, meditation. This is, this is what you can do at home, yeah? I mean, when you're here coming to the monastery, I mean, you practice for 10, 12, 14 hours a day, yeah? And that is very different, it, and it is very difficult as well, yeah? Because then boredom comes up, you know, and, uh, and pain comes up, and all sorts of things that we don't normally have when we practice at home, yeah? Because practicing at home, the mind gets calm, you know, and then we are happy, you know, and there's no pain coming, yeah? And there's not this or not that coming, yeah? We don't see the kilesas <clears throat> unless, unless we, you know, we really <clears throat> get them out, yeah? And we only get them out if we, if we keep them at bay or if we don't fall for it, yeah? So at a monastery, I mean, we have one meal, you know, and we have the whole day to work, yeah? And the kilesas don't like that, yeah? If you, are, if you are at home, you know, if you still work, yeah? I mean, one hour of rest, you know, one hour of meditation, it's fine, you know. I, oh, I could, I could meditate so easily at home, yeah? <laughs> yes, it was only one hour. <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, whenever you're hungry, you go to the fridge, you know, or you cook yourself something. When you're tired, you go to sleep, yeah? It is very different, yeah? I mean, we, we really have to pull out the kilesas. That's why, you know, that's why the Lord Buddha, even as a monk, you know, the Lord Buddha ascribed to us, you know, I mean, these, well, how many Tutankas are these? Seven Tutankas or eleven Tutankas? Uh, thirteen Tutankas, yeah? There are thirteen Tutankas to pull out the Kilesas. For instance, one of the Tutanka we follow, having only one meal a day. Another Tutanka we constantly follow is eating, you know, eating with your hands out of the bowl and not having other things, yeah? and so on. And, and another Dutanka is not wearing new robes, only wearing, wearing robe from discarded cloth, and so on, and so on, just to pull out these kilesas, yeah? Because you don't see them when you are at home, yeah? You don't see them when you go to work, yeah? yeah? Because all the senses are full, you know, I mean, you're, you're set, the senses are satisfied. But when, when you close your eyes here, you know, the senses are not satisfied. <laughs> The Kilesas long for the senses, the senses of sight, the senses of hearing, the senses of, <clears throat> of touching, and so on. Yeah? So that is why it is very different. Yeah? <clears throat> and that is why it is very helpful, you know, to stay in a place, you know, where you have nothing else to do than to practice. Yeah? And that's why it is so difficult to do it. Yeah? Because then you see all these kids. I didn't know that they have so many Kilesas. Yeah? And people don't really understand. They think kilesas is something that comes and goes. Yeah? No, it is not something that comes and goes. It is something that is, it is with us all the time. Yeah? I mean, it is this little voice in our ear that tells us what to do, what to like, what not to like, what not to do, what to get and what not to get. 
And you, every one of you should notice these kilesa, yeah? Hmm? You hear them all the time. They constantly order you around, yeah? Just like your <clears throat> parents used to order you around, or now your husband or wife orders you around, or your girlfriend or, or boyfriend orders you around, please do this, please do that, please do that. Yeah? But to the Kilesas, we never, we never, uh, <clears throat> what is fun? We, now I get mixed up with the languages. Uh, we never put them at bay. We never, you know, <clears throat> we don't resist them. Yeah? We don't resist the Kilesas, and that is the problem. Yeah? That's why they constantly have command over us. Yeah? And here yeah, in the monastery, we learn how to resist them. And it is difficult. Yeah? Okay, it's okay. N next question. Anyone else has questions to ask? Yes, Jessica, I think I saw your hand just now. Do you have questions still? Yes, hello, um, John Martin. Jessica from San Antonio, Texas. Hi, oh, Texas. Sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for your teaching, sir. Um, I hope this question is not silly, but um, so a friend and I, we are really trying to practice the eight precepts and, you know, there is allowable afternoon yeah. and we hear all kinds of different things that are allowed from different temples mm. and we just would like to know um, what at your monastery, sir, because we respect you so much, we want to know what do you allow your eight precepts afternoon because we hear all kinds of different things from sunflower seeds in the afternoon to uh, like chocolate dreams to all kinds of things. So we just would like to know, sir, um, at your temple, what do you allow afternoon? I mean, what, what we allow is, I mean, all, all the seven allowables that, that, that are put out by the Lord Buddha, that is cocoa, that is tea, that is coffee, that is sugar, what? Five allowables, sugar, honey, oil. Honey, oil, yeah? I mean, cocoa? No, it's not an allowable. Yes? It's a medicine. It's not one of the things. It's a medicine. Yeah. I mean, I don't have to enrich it there. But, uh, anyway, <clears throat> cocoa, tea, sugar, honey, oil, and then all sorts of leaves, you know, that help the digestion. Yeah? So, I mean, for instance, prick is allowed. What is prick in? Chili. Chili. Chili is allowed, yeah, garlic is allowed, I mean sunflower seeds are allowed, huh? and tea is allowed, that means for us it is uh, cheese, you know, cheese is allowed, yeah. <clears throat> what, what else? What else? Sal uh, salai, salai, yeah? Seaweed. Uh, seaweed, yeah. These are things that are, are allowed, yeah. And don't don't think of don't think of them as medicines, yeah. <clears throat> then there are, of course, you know, in a sort of sense, you know, not like the Western medicines. There are medicines, you know, for for making, you know, for making the stomach. Yeah. I mean, if the stomach feels sick, you know, and you need to digest, you know, I mean, then then you eat some 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 garlic and some some. Uh, chili and so on, you know, that helps the digestion, yeah, all sorts of things, I mean, even olives are allowed, yeah, and, and uh, if, if you have hunger, you know, I mean, then, then there's some oil and there's some cheese or some cheese, yeah, <clears throat> sunflower seeds, you know, was allowed by, by Lunta Mahabua, you know, because somebody tells him, yeah, I mean, it, it is helpful for the eyes, and Lunta was very careful, yeah, I mean, he said the eye, our eyes are very important, so, I mean, if it's something that nurtures the eyes, you know, I mean, he allowed it, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Texas. Antonio, Texas. Antonio. Oh, where are you yes, from? San Antonio. Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. Yeah, yeah pra I mean, practice, like I said before, you know, I mean, start in the morning. But if you're a couple, you know, I mean, just take the five precepts, yeah. And on the weekends, take the eight precepts, yeah? yeah? 
I mean, it, it is enough, yeah, for a lay life, yeah? Don't, don't, don't put yourself, I mean, sometimes you, people push too much, you know, and then they get dissatisfied, you know, and then they stop everything, yeah? So don't push yourself too much, yeah? Just, yeah, just do, you know, the regular meditation in the morning when you come back from work and before you go to bed, yeah? And when, when you want, you know, on the weekends you want to keep the eight precepts, I keep them, yeah? But there are so many things there, yeah? yeah? <clears throat> if you go to the monastery, you have to keep your eight precepts anyway, so I mean, and then you're separated, wife and, wife and husband are separated, yeah? Then it is much easier. What? Well, we're not, uh, she's my friend, sir. We're, we're, I'm not married. You're not married. I, I'm not married, sir. Oh, okay, I'm not okay. married, sir. <laughs> right. uh, she's my friend. She's okay. in uh, Keller, Texas right now. She, we, we, we just wanted to ask. Okay, um, okay. Yeah. That's but thank okay. you for your advice, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> So, any more questions? Jivaka? Um, you can you unmute yourself? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, this is Jivaka from uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Nebraska? Yeah, United States. <laughs> Nebraska. Uh, that's quite cold, isn't it? It's uh, up in the yeah, north. Time, I guess, yeah. yeah, it's kind of cold. Like we have like a five month winter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, my question is like, uh, I, I'm of a Sri Lankan origin, and uh, so the practice over there, like, I mean, they place a lot of emphasis on uh, learning the scriptures, also, like, knowing, I mean, for example, like, we had to contemplate like when we uh, in, in Vipassana, let's say, uh, when we are seeing that there is eye made contact with form and there's eye consciousness arises. So like looking at, at that way so that we are breaking the delusion of the self or like, so mm. I'm, I'm, I'm just like confused because I know that like uh, in Ashan Room tradition and you are, but you follow like you don't, uh, uh, I mean, other than knowing the like the five ingredients and the basics, uh, like uh, that we need to we don't pay much pay much attention to the scriptures. So I just need to know, like, how much do we need to know in teaching exactly, and uh, in why we are doing our vipassana practice uh, uh, to get rid of kerezas and yeah, free from sufferings. Ah, the the general question, uh, the general answer is, if if you have faith in the Lord Buddha's teaching, yeah, and want to practice, then you don't need to do anything with the with the suttas, yeah, because you have enough faith, yeah. If you have some questions and you have a teacher nearby that can help you with the questions, yeah, or can uh, can give you the answers to the question, then it's fine, yeah. If you don't have a teacher, you might have to look up in the suttas, you know, I mean, what the Lord Buddha said about this topic, yeah? Where, where you just have, have your problems with meditation. But you have to think about, you have to think about the learning of Buddhism. It is like going to school, yeah? I mean, the first, the first step, you, you, you go to kindergarten, yeah? And then you go to primary school, then you go to high school, yeah? And at the end of the high school, you start to learn how to, to practice, you know, you do meditation and you do vipassana. Yeah? And once you go to university, I mean, you don't need the books anymore. Yeah? Then you only practice, yeah? I mean, you learned everything before. So that's why there exists, you know, all over the world, there exist different kind of monasteries, yeah? I mean, some, some monasteries, you know, teach the basic level of kindergarten. Some other monasteries teach, you know, the, of, of um, elementary school and then of high school, you know, and only very, very few places, you know, just like in, in the world, you know, are universities, yeah. And look at Mahabur's monastery, he always called it the Forest University, yeah. So, <clears throat> if you have faith, normally I say if you have faith in the Buddha, in, in the Buddha's teaching, you know, and belief, you know, especially believe the first first letter, that you believe in heaven and hell and in beings in heaven and hell and believe in karma, yeah? Whatever we have done, you know, whatever happens to us is because of our karma. 
then start to practice and then don't worry about these things, yeah? Because once you close your eyes, I mean, how can you not know? And you know, there is sense contact, yeah? There is the contact of feeling, there is the contact, yeah? <clears throat> the contact of hearing, yeah? So, I mean, you, you know it, yeah? What we use is, yeah, what we really use is anicca, anatta, dukkha. These three principles, yeah? Whatever you see, whatever you feel, whatever you get in, whatever you encounter, cannot be you, yeah? So when you look at your arm, it cannot be you, because, you know, I mean, it is not you, yeah? So what sees? It's not the eye that sees, yeah? It's a chitta that sees through the eyes, yeah? The, the eyes, the eyes or, or even the nose, you know, and the tongue, you know, are all, all objects of the chitta that it used, you know, to, to, to sense the world around it, yeah? So as long as, as you use this principle of anatta, whatever feeling arises, yeah, who knows about this feeling, yeah, then use this principle. Yeah? That gets more rid of self than, you know, I mean, repeating this eye contact, you know, I mean, in sense contact, eye contact and so on. Yeah? <clears throat> and that is difficult. Yeah? If you feel pain, you know, I mean, you're, you instantly associate with pain. If you feel hunger, you instantly associate with hunger. If you feel tired, you associate with, part, with tiredness. But if we, if we do really vipassana, we look at these feelings, yeah? Ah, there's a feeling. Okay, and then we can look at it. Yeah? But the first thing about a feeling, for instance pain, we have to accept it. And negative feelings or not, not pleasant, unpleasant feelings, we don't want to accept. We want to get rid of it. And that's why we can't investigate them. Even if we say eye contact or, you know, or, or sense contact or this, or, yeah, I mean, it's still there, we don't want it. Yeah? So the first thing in investigating feelings is to accept the feeling as it is, yeah? I mean, really to breathe it in, yeah? I mean, for instance, uh, I mean, when you go to a place, you know, where there's really a bad smell and you don't want to smell it, I mean, breathe it in, you know, and see, you know, what it is, yeah? Because we don't like things, yeah? That's why we look away or we don't want to notice it, but they are there, yeah? And that is exactly what we want to see, yeah? When you go through the, str when you go through the streets of your town and you see some backers or you see some close, uh, people that you don't like to see, I mean, you always turn your head away, yeah? You don't want to see them. And then you should ask yourself, why don't I want to see them, yeah? Because it is a bad feeling, you have a bad feeling, or you have a feeling of guilt, or you have a feeling of shame, and so on, and you don't realize that, you just turn your head away. Yeah? That is very useful, you know, this, this principle is very useful, and that we use, you know, in meditation, for instance, when we are with the breath, or when we are with our meditation object, be it the Buddha, Dhamma, or Sangha, yeah? then we use the same principle, I mean, whenever thought comes, we turn our attention back to the Buddha. Yeah? In this case, you know, I mean, it leads us to one-pointedness, yeah? But in, in other cases in the world, you know, I mean, we, we normally try to avoid all these unpleasant things, yeah? And when you think about it, you know, when you think about hate, you know, I, when you think about hate and, um, and, greed and greed and hate, yeah? I mean, the scales of, of our living being is completely out of balance. We always hanker after, you know, we always hanker after the nice and pleasant feelings, we run after them, yeah? And we try to avoid all these unpleasant things, yeah? That's why we never get a really look, yeah? What are unpleasant feelings? What are pleasant feelings, yeah? It is just like a dog, you know, you put a sausage in front of him and some tin cans on, on his tail, I mean, he will always run, yeah? And what did the Lord Buddha said, you know, to Angulimala, stop running! Yeah? So we should stop running and then we see, you know, then we see the sausage, you know, the pleasantness, and we see the unpleasantness, yeah? But we don't do that, yeah? And that is, that is, that is a part of Vipassana training, yeah? I mean, to, to get acquainted with all these unpleasant things that constantly happen to us. That's why the daily reflection is so helpful, that we see it, you know, what is happening and why is it happening, what caused it, yeah? And so on, yeah? Okay? Thanks, sir. <coughs> Anyone else?
as efficient to us. If not, Tanjan, is it okay I start reading the questions? Yeah, just, just, just one more thing, you know, because we were with this running away from the pleasant, unpleasant feelings and running after the pleasant feelings, yeah. It, it is the same, you know, for, for, for some people, yeah, at the moment I, I see, you know, I see people coming who want to ordain, yeah. I mean, they should ask themselves, yeah, I mean, to, to become a monk, you know, or to become a Mechi, that is not the goal of our practice, you know. It is not the goal, you know, of, of, that leads to, to arahantship, yeah? The, the goal is to practice, yeah? And that, you know, and it is helpful to become a monk, or it is helpful to be a Meiji, or it is helpful, you know, just to stay in a monastery to achieve that goal, yeah? But the goal itself is not to become a monk, yeah? Because becoming a monk is just another profession. I mean, that is, that is my experience, you know, when I see all these Buddhist monks, you know, in the West, it's a, it's a new profession. Huh? They want to become a monk, you know, because they shine out, you know, or they, they, they yeah, display something. That, it, that is not, nothing different, you know, I mean, from being a teacher, yeah? <clears throat> or a government official, yeah? I mean, we, we, should, we should be clear, you know, why we want to ordain, yeah? Is it helpful to our practice? You know, our goal should be, you know, to, to, to reach at least Sotapanna Sagatakami, Anakami or Arahantship, yeah? And what is helpful to this, yeah? yeah? Becoming, becoming a monk can be very helpful to this, yeah? If you just want to reach Sotapanna, you know, I mean, it, it might not be that much, yeah? <clears throat> also, Mechi, you know, I mean, there's a certain image that we have, and then we, we hanker after these images, or we hanker after this, yeah, whatever, whatever we think about it, yeah? It's also our imagination, yeah? I mean, some people have the imagination that when they come to a monastery, yeah, I mean, it is all peaceful, you know, I mean, it is all, you know, yeah, there's no quarrel, there's nothing, yeah? I mean, think about it, yeah? When we, ordain as a monk, or when we ordain as a Meiji, yeah? Our Kilesas do not ordain, huh? And the Kilesas are the problem, yeah? That, that, that is the problem, you know? The Kilesas don't ordain, you know? I mean, we as a person, you know, take on ropes and think we are different. We are not different, yeah? Before we ordain, or be, and, and the day after we ordain, we are just the same persons, yeah? Hmm? We take on we take on some more precepts, yeah. <clears throat> then then the lay people, yeah, that, that is the difference, yeah. But the kilesas are still the same, huh? Which is the same thing, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they want this, they want this, you know. And they quarrel in the monastery. Yeah? There are some there are some fights, you know, hopefully only fights in words, yeah. And that is normal, yeah. <clears throat> I mean living in Wat Babantad, you know, it is normal, yeah. They are monks, you know, fighting each other, you know, and, and getting angry at each other. That is normal, yeah? But when we are in a monastery, we should deal with it, yeah? And we should deal with it within our person. If we see something that aggravates us, you know, we should deal with it inside ourselves. Huh? We shouldn't go to the other person and say, you are not doing it right, you are not doing it right, you are not doing it right, yeah? No, I don't like this the way you do this, I don't like the way you do this, or this is not correct, or that is not correct. No? That's, that is not the way. <clears throat> we have to realize, you know, I mean, when we ordain, you know, I mean, the Kilesas don't ordain, yeah? And there is still the, all this hate and all this greed within us, yeah? And we have to curb it in. We have to curb in this greed and we curb in this hate, yeah? So we shouldn't, yeah? We shouldn't go into fist fighting, yeah? That, that is out of the question, yeah? This should not happen in a monastery, yeah? And it normally doesn't happen, yeah? But people get really angry, yeah? The people got really angry at me, yeah? yeah? <laughs> one, one monk, you know, I mean, was running after I said something to him, yeah? He was running after me, you know, I was just, uh, just going up my kutti, yeah? <clears throat> and he, wa he was down there, yeah? And he said, I'm going to kill you! I said, you know, I mean, if it relieves your anger, you know, let me go down, and I went down, okay, yeah. 
And then he said, oh no, I can't do it here in this place, you know, I wait until you go to Dong and then I kill you. <laughs> and he actually waited for me until I went to Dong, but that time I came just a week later and then he, he, he just left, yeah. People get really angry, people get really pissed, you know, that is, that is quite normal, this is, it has nothing to do, you know, <clears throat> with being in a monastery. Yeah? The other, the other time, you know, I'm, they really want to kill me, yeah? <clears throat> the other time, you know, I dare, I dare to go Pindapa, yeah, Armstrong, on Armstrong, yeah, on a different route, yeah? I mean, in Bantat, in Wat Bantat, there were three Armstrongs, yeah? One long one that I normally use, you know, uh, a medium one and a very short one. And then one day I went on the short one. And there was a monk, you know, who didn't like me. He said, how dare you go on my arms wrong, yeah? And then he went to my throat, you know, and he choked me, yeah? <clears throat> so it does happen, yeah? So don't think, you know, I mean, it is all peaceful, all nice, you know, no quarrel. Of course there is quarrel. I mean, and the quarrel is within us, yeah? And that's what we have to fight. We have to fight you know, to watch our speech and not to let our anger out, yeah? That's why the Lord Buddha ascribed or prescribed to us, you know, that when you live at a monastery, you live like you are alone, yeah? Don't interact with people if, they don't, if there's no need to interact with them, yeah? That keeps, you know, that keeps that, you know, hostility or the anger down a little bit, yeah? And then when the anger comes out at your kuti, then you can deal with it easier because you have no object to, to place it on. If you, if you look at other, all the other people, you know, then you always have an object to place your anger on and you think it is not because of you, it is because of the other person. And that's where you go wrong, yeah? <clears throat> so don't, don't, don't think, you know, I mean, when you become a monk, everything is peaceful. Of course, there is always, yeah? I mean, in Wat Papandra, there were three different groups that constantly fight each other, yeah? yeah. Not, yeah, yeah? <clears throat> Ah, it was. <laughs> I can't. I can't even. Yeah, and they, and I was so naive. Yeah, I'm. I'm a very naive person. You know, I. Be, I believe and I trust people when they say something to me. I trust them. Yeah. So this person, you know, I mean, one of the archons told me. Yeah. I mean, go go to the other group and tell them. You know that what they are doing is wrong. Yeah. Huh? And who was to blame? You know, it was of course me. Whoever brings a <laughs> brings a message, yeah. I mean, we always kill the messenger. We don't kill, you know, the person who sends the message, yeah. And only after after two years, I realized and said, you know, just go yourself. <laughs> don't don't let me do the this work, yeah. But that's how how it works, you know. I mean, there 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 will be this greed and there will be this hatred among people when people live together. But what we do, you know, we try to do our best, you know, not to let it out. Yeah. Okay. Understood, yeah? Yeah? Meiji, same, you know. Huh? Chicken fight, yeah? <laughs> but also the men, yeah? I mean, it is, you know, there are some difficult characters. And that's where we can learn, yeah? Because we have to realize, yeah? Whatever we see in the other person and don't like it is within ourselves. Ah, that hurts. That really hurts. Yeah? It is also good for you, for lay people who still live in the world, who have problems with their boss or things like that. Yeah? I mean, it is within you. The anger comes, arises within you. Yeah? And normally the anger arises if you see something in the other person. Yeah? What you don't like, but what you have within yourself. Maybe not to this degree, yeah? Maybe it is just very, very small, but you still have it. Because if, <clears throat> if you don't have it, anger will not arise, yeah? There will be meta, compassion arise for this person because you know what he's going through. So when anger arises, it tells you, you know, yeah? it tells you it is within you. You have the same thing, you have the same, you know, you have the same behavior, you have the same, huh? <clears throat> same problems, yeah, that you see in other people. That's why I always say, you know, I mean, 
The, the, the world is a mirror of ourselves. Yeah? Whatever we see in the mirror is within ourselves. It's just a projection. Yeah? But people don't realize it. People think this person is bad, that person is bad, you know, but we are all good, yeah? Huh? We are really all good, huh? huh? No. There's evil within our heart and there's goodness in our heart. And we have to realize that, yeah? And that is what this practice is about, yeah? We bring out the evil and get rid of it, yeah? And bring out the evil is to accept that there is evil within us, yeah? And the other people, you know, it, when we live here in the monastery, I mean, show us our weaknesses, show us our faults, yeah? They are not to blame, yeah? I mean, they have their, their own problems, yeah? But we have the problem with this person or that person, yeah? And that's where we go, yeah? That's where we go and investigate. Okay, so if there are no more uh, live questions, then, then you can go with the with the uh, written question. I think Jivaka has a follow-up question. Okay. Hi, uh, uh, I, I just need a further clarification Achana, about uh, the Vipassana, I mean, the yeah. scriptures in Vipassana. And uh, just because like, I hear this in uh, Sri Lanka, like, it's, not, it's important to, um, I mean, I'm just paraphrasing, uh, it's important to see the way the Buddha saw, yeah. uh, not just the, the way that we think uh, is right. So that is why they say that it is important to uh, use the scriptures to understand uh, what the Buddha I mean, says about uh, seeing things yeah. uh, in our, in our, that comes to our senses and the, the reaction. So we have to break down the way the Buddha breaks down, so for that we need the knowledge. So I just need further clarification about what how do we do that practically? And uh, especially, I mean, if, if we have, like you say, Rachan uh, uh, says that, like, if we know that we are with an enlightened person or like someone who has reached the first stages, I guess there's no problem because they have already seen that. But if, if that is not the case, uh, shouldn't we rely a lot on, like, how the Buddha uh, described uh, uh, on how, how, to, uh, how to see things, how to... Uh, how to see uh, things, to, yeah, yeah, I mean, the, it's, it's a great concept, yeah, and it's a concept, yeah. If the Lord Buddha was still there, then we could see the way that the Lord Buddha saw it, yeah. But now we have only the scriptures left, yeah. And when you remember, yeah, you probably studied, you studied quite a lot, yeah. When you read one book, yeah, and another person reads one book, yeah? Then you have different ideas of what the writer wrote, don't you? So how can you see the way that the Lord Buddha saw it? Because you read the suttas, you interpret the suttas because of, of your own wisdom and because of your own understanding. <laughs> and there's somebody else who reads the same sutta but has a different understanding and has a different level of wisdom. See, see the problem? So we cannot, yeah? That's why Lunga Mahaboy, he didn't really want us to read anything, yeah? I mean, he didn't want to have a library in the monastery, yeah? He was only focused on practice because that's how we see the way of the Lord Buddha. Yeah? I mean, the Lord Buddha said, open your eyes and see for yourself, yeah? But we, we run with closed eyes, yeah? And we run with eyes, you know, that read the text and try to understand the text, yeah? And especially, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that you're in the West, you know, because they're really blinded by, by the text. Yeah? And they think so much about the text, they think this should be like this, but that is their own ideas, yeah? When you close your eyes and when you see what is going on in your heart, that is the way that the Lord Buddha saw it. I mean, how did the Lord Buddha practice, yeah? He didn't practice because of scriptures, yeah? I mean, he closed his eyes, yeah? I mean, yes, he learned the chanas, you know, from, from, from one, two, two, eight chanas, but then he saw this is not the way out, yeah? And then what did he practice? The middle path, the middle way, yeah? So he investigated all these things, yeah? He saw one extreme is not good, the other extreme is not good, yeah? Go the, go the middle way. Yeah? 
And we can only, everyone, every one of us, yeah, can only do this, you know, by, for himself, yeah. Because the middle path of you and the middle path of somebody else is different, yeah. Because we have different characteristics, yeah. As, as I said before, as I said to you, if you don't have a teacher around, yeah, of course you can take the suttas as a help, yeah. And sometimes, yeah, the Dhammapada, you know, some of the verses of the Dhammapada are great, yeah. I mean, they make us think, yeah. And sometimes, you know, the suttas make us think and, and direct us in the right direction, yeah. But if you have a good teacher, I mean, go and ask him. He gives you a straight answer, yeah. He doesn't, he, he, and there you cannot interpret anything, yeah. When I went to see Lunta Mahaboy, you know, I mean, I asked him a question, and I mean, instantly I got the right, for me, yeah. For another person it would be, have, have a different uh, uh, answer, yeah. But for this person he has the right answer, you know, and it really went down to the heart, yeah. Sometimes he didn't even need to say something, yeah. He just made a gesture, you know, and... I understood, yeah? But for other people, you know, I mean, he, he has to, 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 to say this and say that and show him this and show him that, yeah? So that's where the, where the teacher is good, yeah? And that goes beyond the scriptures, yeah? Yes, I said in the beginning it is important, you know, to get faith in the Buddha's teaching, yeah? To see the scriptures and to read all the stories, yeah? Especially the Chatakas, yeah? The, the previous birth stories, I mean, what, what did the Lord Buddha go through, yeah? But now you see it, you, you see it in the West and you see it probably in America. I mean, there, there are people who study the text and they are becoming cleverer than the Lord Buddha himself. Huh? That's the road to hell, yeah? I mean, if we think, if we think, what the Lord Buddha said, that was not correct, that was not correct. I mean, this is so wrong, and that is so wrong, this is not so important, that is not so important. I mean, who are we to judge? Huh? But, I mean, we are, you know, we are born, you know, I mean, I know Sri Lankans and, and Indians are very, very, working very hard, you know, on, on, on text, you know, and study very high, you know, to the highest level, to PhD, yeah, and so on. That's where we think, you know, that's where we become deluded. The more we study, the more we become deluded, you know, the, the more we think we know. But in actuality, we don't know anything. Yeah? Look at the scientists, you know, look at the scientists. Huh? <coughs> they, they know how the world, you know, evolved and so on. But they don't understand a thing, yeah? because they don't believe in ghosts, they don't believe in hell, they don't believe in heaven. Yeah? So how can they understand what is, how this, uh, world of 30, 31 Lokatat, um, 31 realms of existence, yeah? They don't, they don't see it. And they don't see Kama. This is the most, um, the, <coughs> the most important principle, Kama. Because whatever happens to us right now is because of our Kama from our previous lives, yeah? We are born because of our Kama. I mean, when you chant, you know, you know it, yeah? Kama Dayara, Kama Yoni, Kama Pantu. I mean, we are, we are the <coughs> recipients of our Kama, yeah? We are born because of our Kama, we die because of our Kama, whatever happens to us, yeah? We are the, we, we are the owner of our Kama, and whatever happens to us is because of our Kama, yeah? Tell that, tell, tell that to your, to your friends in, in, uh, what, what was it, Oric? No, uh, Nebraska? They won't believe it. They won't believe it. Yeah? They say this is impossible. Yeah? What happens? You know, if somebody is robbed, yeah, he's robbed because of his karma. Yeah? If somebody is, you know, <clears throat> cheated out of his possession, it is because of his karma. Yeah? If, if somebody is put into, into prison, you know, innocent, you know, put into prison, it is because of his karma. Do we want to see that? Ask, ask your friends in Nebraska. They, they don't believe it, yeah? And most of us, you know, most of us from the West don't believe it, yeah? It is very important to understand it, huh? Also, these, these guys from India, yeah? <laughs> huh? <clears throat> Whatever happens to us is because of our karma. Yes, the Lord Buddha said there are chances, 
But don't, don't assume that all the things that happen to you are chances. You said there are chances. But most of us, yeah, I would say 99%, you know what happens to us is because of our own karma. Yeah? So live with it, you know, accept it, yeah? grind your teeth, you know, when it is bad, you know, but it will go over. Yeah? It will pass away just like any dark cloud, it will pass away. Yeah? Some clouds are taking longer, other clouds, you know, are, are passing over very, very fast. Yeah? And see, you know, I mean, if you fight with any situation, yeah, I mean, that especially holds true for all the lay people who do work, yeah. If you fight with any situation, you make it just worse, yeah. And the problem is when you fight with something, you don't see, <coughs> you don't see the opportunity that are just right now here, yeah. Because you have a view, you want this, you know, and you don't see it. Yeah? I mean, it is like we are tunnel view. Be it with our greed or be it with our anger, we are tunnel view and we don't see anything around us. We don't see all this opportunity that open up. Yeah? If, we, if we, you know, just look at it, wow, yeah? there's a bad, really bad situation. But then th this is opening up, you know, oh, that is good, yeah? Let's do this way, let's go this way. But we can't because we have so such a fixed mind on our ideas, what to do and what what I want to achieve and how I can achieve it, that we don't see, you know, these these many possibilities that we have. Okay. Thanks, Ajahn. Well, uh, the, the follow up question for that, like how how do we know then like we are doing the right way? Especially if we are not seeing any results, like okay, we get some I mean like like get some let's say good samadhi and good feeling from that, but when I'm doing vipassana, how do I measure my progress, especially like, unless like, yeah, I know that you give us the example of like digging through a mountain and until we see the light, we don't know where we are, but I mean, <laughs> is there any, <laughs> any other way like not? I mean, let, let me tell you a story, you know, when, <clears throat> From, from, from my person, you know, I was, before I came here to Thailand, I was practicing for six years, yeah, practicing in the West, yeah, Samadhi, I mean, my Samadhi was really great, you know, I mean, exceptionally, yeah, also a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of understanding, because I did this, this reflection, you know, the, the daily reflection, so I got a lot, you know, I mean, most of the problems in the world have disappeared, because I understood where they come from, yeah, so, I mean, the teachers that I met in the West, you know, I mean, they couldn't match me, they couldn't answer my questions, yeah. So I thought, you know, of course, you know, I mean, I'm pretty much enlightened, yeah. yeah? And then I came to Wat Bhavantat, yeah, and I saw Lumta Mahaboa, yeah? And, yeah, and then I got into touch with his practice, and then I realized I haven't even started practicing, huh? Because that was completely different, yeah? I mean, Samadhi is, is a little part, you know, of his teaching. Yeah? The teaching is Vipassana. And the Vipassana is the first thing and the most important thing, yeah? <clears throat> is the body investigation, yeah? And that's what, what in the West we don't like to do, yeah? We don't want to, yeah? I mean, people in the West say, you know, I mean, I don't want to make this body ugly. You don't have to make it ugly, you just have to look at the shit, you know, I mean, it is disgusting. <clears throat> or you have to spit in your hand, you know, and, and then, you know, wait for a minute and lick it up again. It is disgusting. Whatever comes out of the body is disgusting. We don't have to make it disgusting. It is, yeah? And ask, ask if you know a medical person who, got, who went through medical training, who opened up the first time a corpse, yeah? Either he falls unconscious or throws up. Yeah. Or even police people, you know, policemen, you know, who see a dead, you know, who see a murder case and, and see a dead person, you know, who, who is lying there for three weeks, you know, they want to throw up. Yeah. It's that, that stinks come from this body. So Vipassana is body investigation. And don't even think about progress, yeah? I mean, just, yeah, just remind yourself. I mean, as long as you're within the five precepts, yeah, you're doing okay. You're on the right path, yeah. And then if you do meditation, as long as you're with the breath or as long as you're with the Buddha, you're doing it right. Yeah. 
Whenever you go out, when the Buddha disappears, you know, then you pull it back, or when the breath disappears, you pull it back, you pull your attention back. And the same thing is with Vipassana, yeah? I mean, so you focus, yeah? You don't have to focus always on the same object, yeah? I mean, the first thing, you know, to sharpen your wisdom, you know, is investigating pain. So sit for two or three hours, you know, and then start to investigate pain, yeah? I mean, I, I told often enough how to investigate pain, yeah? Or, you know, just do, yeah? Just take, you know, before you do Vipassana, take one object, yeah? I mean, be it the hair of the head, hair of the body, you know, the teeth or the skin, or go inside, you know, and take, take something that interests you, yeah? And then take this object, just like the breath, or just like the Buddha, yeah? And focus, in, focus on it until you see it. And as long as you're with, the, with this object, yeah? You're doing fine. Yeah? The progress you will see. I mean, I was working on this investigation of the body for seven years, yeah? And I didn't see any progress. Only when I look back after seven years, I saw all, oh, you know, I mean, the greed reduced, you know, and the hatred re reduced a little bit, yeah? But you don't see it within months, yeah? And I was working for 12, 14 hours a day, you know, on this practice, yeah? So I don't think, you know, I mean, just doing one hour of the pass and I, you know, will <laughs> get you rid of the, the desire for the body. Yeah. Okay, understood? Understood. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, more questions? I know his face. Hi, Ajahn. I'm Darren here from Singapore. Ah, Which Singapore, Singapore. Yeah? Just, I have a question because Ajahn was saying about conflict just now. So, so about what? About conflict. Can you hear me? Conflict. Yeah. 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 So sometimes in life we will meet some difficult people. So my approach is to avoid them so that, you know, because as they are difficult to handle, so I will try to avoid them. But I have not any harm intention just to avoid them, you know, to handle them, so I will avoid them. But sometimes these difficult people will approach me and when they approach me, they make my life very difficult. They, be, they demand stuff that's almost impossible. Just throw a lot of things to me. And me, my, my own business, doing my best that I can. They just throw it to me. And when they throw it to me, I can't accomplish. I feel very drained, very tired. And even though how much I try to bring up the contemplation of Anicca, Tukka, Anatta, it's very hard because at that state, it's so tough. Even Puto can't even come out anymore because it's really very drained. So I may ask Ajahn in this situation, like, I don't even want to create conflict. They come to me. How should I handle it? <laughs> because it's your karma. I mean, you create a conflict. Yeah? I mean, I, that's why I say, yeah. I mean, try to be in this situation. If you can avoid, if you cannot handle the situation, try to avoid the situation. If you cannot avoid the situation, face the situation. Yeah? But face it with a clear mind, with Buddha. Yeah? If you can't do that, you know, <clears throat> try as much as you can do, yeah? And then after the situation, sit down, yeah? Make the mind calm and do a reflection of what happened. And don't judge, this was good or this was bad, or they, you know, they just poured these things onto me. How did you react to these things pouring onto you? Because uh, <clears throat> when, when you pour on things onto an arahant, you know, it is just like you spread it out, you know, it goes through him, yeah? Nothing, yeah? It is our attachment to certain values, to certain views, you know, that keep that, keep that energy that comes towards us, yeah? Inside ourselves and try to avoid it. Don't avoid it. Let it through, yeah? That, that is the key, yeah? But until we can do it, you know, I mean, we have to, to practice, yeah? And you have to do the daily reflection, yeah? If you, if you see people, yeah? I mean, <clears throat> I'll give you an example from my, from, from my, from my life as, you know, work, working in a company, yeah? I always like to work alone, you know? I mean, I'm always busy, you know? But, you know, I mean, I was in a group of people, you know, of scientists, you know, I mean, who worked together on a project, yeah? So if one of these people came in, you know, and wanted this and wanted that, I always tried to defend it, yeah? Um, yeah. And it took hours, you know, because he didn't let go, yeah? Until I, I, I did, you know, this reflection, said, well, what are you doing, yeah? So, 
Yeah? Because I was still clinging on to the things that I wanted to do, and I didn't pay attention to what he, and he felt that I didn't pay attention to him. That's why it spread out for hours. Yeah? So the next time, you know, I mean, after a while, I, I realized that I, I just, you know, hurt myself or put myself in a lot of dukkha. Yeah? Then when somebody came in, yeah, I put everything aside, said, there, there you are, and then put my whole attention on that person. And then I realized within five or ten minutes the, the, the business was over. And there was no, there was no tiredness, I, wa I wasn't feeling tired, yeah? I've, because I didn't defend it. I just wanted to listen to what he has to say. Okay? Okay, I think I'll try to lay it through. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy. It, it might take half a year or a year, you know, until you can do it, yeah? Hmm? I just, you know, I mean, all these things, yeah? I mean, I went through so many things, yeah? Thank you, Ajay Paiva. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> so, I'll start reading the questions. So, this question is from the chat. Venerable uh, Ajahn, while practicing in seclusion on eight precepts for several days, I had pains in my heart zone many times a day. They were like hot iron crushing my chest, sometimes accompanied with doubts. Once there was a particularly painful round of this pain, but after I was fully aware of it and let it cease, it's like my mind was no more so afraid of pain and these pains almost stopped to appear. I remember you speaking about heart pains you experienced while practicing in the forest. Can you tell more about this pain? Thank you, Venerable Ajahn. Oh. <laughs> it is like I. It's just like I said before, yeah. The first thing, you know, there's, there's some things, you know, there's some pain, yeah. You will have to accept it, yeah? Be Before you can start to investigate it, yeah? Before you see what is coming, yeah. What, what came before? What came before the pain? It's a very in interesting question. But if you don't like the pain, if you want to get rid of the pain, you never come to get the, come to go, to get the answer of this, yeah. <clears throat> because the, the answer it came before, yeah? What happened before the pain started, yeah? But even though if it is just, if it just, you know, the kilesas, you know, trying to, to, to put your attention away, then you still have to accept it. You still have to ask the question, what is pain? Where is the pain? Is it anicca? Is it anatta? Yeah? And investigate it. Is it point-wise? It, yeah? Is it constant? Yeah? Where is it? Is it in the flesh? Is it in the, you know, is it in the bones? Is it in the tissue? And what happens in the beginning of our investigation of pain? The moment, actually, you know, for, for the first few times, yeah, the moment we accept pain, it's gone. Yeah. It is mostly our resistance to pain or to painful feelings that creates even stronger and stronger and stronger of pain. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're accepting, as accepting pain, yeah, and no, knowing what, what it is, yeah, <clears throat> is, is the first key, yeah? and then we can ask the questions, yeah? I mean, as I said in the beginning, it will disappear and then we can't investigate it anymore. But after a while, you know, the pain becomes stronger, yeah, and then we can investigate it, you know? then we can follow it. Because at the time, you know, at the first time, you know, it was at this location, then it moves to that location, and then we go with our attention to that location, and then it moves to, to another location, then we go, and, and we follow the pain until it shows us where it comes from. When we, when we see it with our own eyes, inner eyes, yeah? Yeah? not with our understanding that we have where the pain arises, yeah? that is, that's not helpful. We have to see, you know, where the pain arises. Yeah? And then, yeah, I mean, then the pain goes. Yeah? But that, that is only, the, that is only the, the normal pain that comes up, you know, during our meditation. I mean, the three stages of death is different, yeah? <clears throat> but it's also pain, you know, it is also pain. Yeah? But it is three, day, uh, three stages of death. Yeah? And these three stages of death, the first is, yeah, 
you don't get any breath anymore. Yeah? So the breath stops there, yeah? and you think you die. Yeah? And then you have to overcome the fear of death. Yeah? You have to let it go. Yeah? And have in mind, yeah, I mean, it's, you will not do it on the first time. Yeah? I mean, many people try it, you know, I mean, they work for years on this kind of fear. Yeah? <clears throat> the fear, fear of the first death, you know, it is the breath goes over. Yeah? <clears throat> so so you, you have to accept, yeah? And what was, what was for me interesting is that the moment I ask the question, yeah, I mean, everything dies, you know, what is left? So stay with what is left, yeah? And then with, that was gone. I mean, you really thought, you know, I mean, somebody, you know, somebody is pushing you against the mountain, you know, and then you don't get any, your, 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 breath, your chest is crushed in, you know, and you don't get any breath and you will die, yeah? And the moment you accepted this death, it, it was gone. Yeah. And then, you know, for, for another two or three hours, you know, happy, happy, samadhi, you know, until the next pain of death comes. Yeah. And the next pain of death is, I mean, your whole body is on fire. Yeah. I mean, this is, yeah, what else can I say? Yeah. I mean, it is extremely difficult. Yeah. And you deal with it with the same way. Yeah. And, the, and the third stage and the last stage of death is when all the elements break apart. But it is helpful, you know, if you investigate death before, yeah? I mean, investigate death, yeah? I mean, when you do body contemplation, investigate death. I mean, the chitra remembers every death. And we have millions of different kinds of death, yeah? So you can investigate them all. You just pick it up, yeah? You, you want to see, you know, I mean, you, <clears throat> you visualize your body lying in front of you and then you tell the chitta, let it die, yeah? And then you see it. The first thing that goes out is the air, yeah? Then what goes out is the water, yeah? The temperature, yeah? That is the fire, yeah? And then, you know, the elements break apart and then, then the things go out, you know, I mean, the flesh and all rots away until there's only the hard stuff, the material, yeah? The bones, yeah? Let, you know, let the chitta show you, yeah? yeah? That is one of the contemplation, the death contemplation, yeah? Let the chitta show you, yeah? What was helpful to me in the beginning of my practice, you know, I, I went through 40 different kinds of death, yeah? All or a horrible death, yeah? I was, you know, I was uh, burned alive, you know, I was torn between horses and so on and so on. I was dying on the battlefield, nobody noticed it, you know, and I was dying of the thirst and so on, yeah? Forty different kinds of death. Yeah? After that, this never happened again. Yeah? But this is, you know, this is something, you know, this, this prepares you for this kind of meditation of the three stages of pains of death. Yeah? And after that, I mean, death itself is, yeah, I mean, most of the people are not afraid of death itself. They are afraid of the pain of death, yeah? yeah? <clears throat> But some people, of course, are afraid of what is going to happen, you know? And if people are afraid of, yeah, what is going to happen after death, mostly like, most likely they go to hell. And the chitta knows it, that they are already on the path to hell, yeah? That's why they are afraid today, you know, afraid, afraid to die. Okay, so... Uh, today the, the, these are long answers, huh? G give me a question with a short answer. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Asing has a question to ask. Okay. Yeah, I have a, a question for Asing to ask. Yeah? When are you coming? <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Alupo. <laughs> uh, wish you good health. Can I ask you more about death? Yeah. Uh, just now you were mentioning about the three stages of death. Don't even think so, about it. Well, yeah, the think about what I said before, yeah? Contemplate that, you know, I mean, the chitta is completely calm, yeah? Then you, you visualize the body, you know, you close your eyes, visualize the body in front of you, and then tell the chitta to show you that, yeah? This, these so, are the, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to sit, I mean, to go through these stages, you know? I mean, if you haven't gone through the stages of pain, yeah? If you have not realized, you know, where the pain actually is coming from, you will not, you will not be able to go through the stages of pain of death, yeah? So it all builds up on, yeah? You understand that? Yeah. What is your question? 
activities, many persons, and any person, an ordinary person who is not practicing or haven't practicing enough, and is when he is about to die, is he going to experience the three stages of pain? So, of course. But it might so be very, he, it might be very quick, and because they are in agony, they don't realize these three stages of pain. But they will realize it, yeah? And at the third stage, you know, when all the, uh, the elements break apart, you know, he will leave the body, yeah? He will still experience the same pain, you see? Yeah. People, people say, oh, he, he looks like a person dies happily. But actually, he's not dying happily, he is dying painfully. Yeah, I mean, you, I, people cut themselves and don't even realize, yeah? But if, you know, if they look at the pain, you know, they will realize that there is pain. There is so much pain that we don't even realize that there is pain, yeah? So, I mean, people, are, people who are dying are mostly afraid, you know, of what is coming after death, yeah? yeah? Or they are afraid of the, 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 the sickness that they have, have, you know, or this, this part of, you know, this pain or that pain, you know? Yeah? So they don't look, yeah? I mean, only a person, you know, who has sati can see these three stages of death, yeah? Understood? Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, have sati, that's why it is so important, you know, to have sati when you die, yeah? Because not only that you see, yeah, that you see these st stages of pain, yeah? But also that you can make a choice in which direction to go. Yeah, if you have the if you have the ticket for heaven, you know you can go to heaven. If you have the ticket for hell, you can go to hell. If you have the ticket to come back <clears throat> as a human being, you can choose. Yeah, don't let the don't let the karma, you know, that is the most heaviest, you know, decide where you go. Yeah, people without sati, you know, they will go, you know, wherever their karma leads them. Yeah. Understood? Thank you, Asik. Uh, read the next question. Uh, dear Long Po, I'm finding it hard to do the reflection as the mind goes through hundreds of thoughts in a day and I don't remember all of them or my mind runs off to other thoughts. Would you please explain how I can do the reflection in an easier way? <clears throat> there is no easier way, there is just a, the constant training. Think about the daily reflection as learning to walk, yeah? I mean, you get up, you fall over, you get up, you fall over, you get up, you fall over. And, you know, sooner or later you can stand a little bit, you know, before you fall over, and at the end you can walk, yeah? That is the same with the daily reflection, yeah? You don't... I mean, you have to remember, yeah? I mean, remember the situations that happen, yeah? So when you get up, yeah? Ask yourself, what kind of thoughts were there? What kind of memories were there? What did I do next? Yeah? And then remember what kind of thoughts, what kind of memories yeah, were there, you know, or led you to doing this or doing that. Yeah? This is important. Go through the activities, yeah? go through the daily activities and try to remember you know, the thoughts and the memories that were around these activities. The problem is, you know, I mean, don't judge it if it was good or bad. The heart knows it is if it was good or bad. Don't judge it. And if you see you're drifting, just go to the next, yeah? If you can't remember, you know, what happened, yeah? I mean, to me, you know, I mean, I remembered when I started with the daily reflection, I remembered until I, I put my bicycle in the, in, the, in the bicycle garage of the company, you know, and then I walked up to my desk, yeah? That was the last thing I remember. And then eight hours later, you know, after, after I finished work, I remember how I went down to get my bicycle. Yeah? So eight hours blanked out, yeah? So I tried, you know, I tried to put, you know, put some more sati, you know, put, put some more <clears throat> attention during the day, you know, when I was eating, you know, when I had a meal, you know, or when I was drinking a coffee, you yeah? know, or this or that, or when I went to the toilet, yeah? Huh? Just be mindful, mindful, yeah? And then you break it down, yeah? <clears throat> no, you don't have to remember every thought, you know, every memory. I mean, pinpoint it to any kind of action that you do. Brushing the teeth, 
Huh? When I brushed my teeth, what did I think about? When I take a shower, what did I think? What, what kind of memories were there? Yeah? And, and when I ate, you know, what kind of things, you know, what, yeah? When I, when I talk to this person, what kind of memories, what kind of thought? You understand that? That is already difficult enough. <clears throat> so, next. Okay, next question. Dear Long Po, please explain again the proper meaning of the fetter of attachment to rites and rituals. I do not understand how this is a major factor as I personally do not feel that I have very strong attachment in this regard. It, it's a wrong translation. I mean, if, if, if you listen to the talks, you know, this is a rites and rituals. I mean, what, what does it say? Sila Pata Paramasa. What is Sila? Precepts. Eh? And Pata Paramasa means, you know, take on precepts and, or, or, you know, you, you keep the precepts and not hold the precepts. Lunga Mahaboa explained it very, very, very well, yeah? When you read the tenth chapter of Life of Inequality, he explains it extremely well, yeah? It has nothing to do with rites and rituals. Huh? I mean, the person who translated, see lies precepts, yeah? That means, yeah, this fetter, and everyone has this fetter, yeah? <clears throat> Unless he's a sodapana. <clears throat> we, one day we keep the precepts, and the next day we don't keep the precepts, then we keep the precepts, or then we take them on, and then we keep them for three days, and then we break them again, then we keep them, and then we break them again. That is the second fetter, yeah? So, I mean, to get rid of the second fetter is, from now on I keep the precept. But, as I also explained, yeah, <clears throat> the path to the end of Dukkha is Sila, Samadhi, Panya. Sila are the precepts, yeah. <clears throat> Samadhi is the ability to concentrate and Panya is wisdom, yeah. I mean, you need also Samadhi and you need wisdom to be able to see yeah, when you break the precepts. If you have no sati, you don't know that you break the precepts. Yeah? People who are blind who go through the blind alley, you know, they don't see what is happening in the blind alley or what they do. Yeah? It's just like people who are drunk, they don't know anything. Yeah? They have no perception of what they break or do they not break. Yeah? So people who don't have sati, who don't know yeah, what they are doing, why they are doing, what the results of their doing, yeah, they constantly are. <clears throat> in in danger of failing their precepts. I hope this is clear now. Now it should be clear. Oh, huh? okay. At least here they understand it. So hopefully the persons you know who asked the question also understand. It. So next question. What is it? <coughs> next question. Yeah. Um, if we are with perfect paramis, like for example patience or wisdom. Is it possible to develop in this life in order to attain at least Sotapanna? Thank you, Venerable Ajahn. I mean, it has nothing to do with paramis, yeah? Huh? I mean, perfect the paramis, yeah? It is just like, you know, in the West, you know, at least in, in Germany, I mean, we have to perfect the sila. We don't even start with samadhi, and we don't start with wisdom. It is impossible. I mean, think about, you know, how, how much, how long the Lord Buddha, you know, was perfecting the paramis. How many lives did he have to live huh? to perfect his paramis? I mean, if you want to know, read the Charter card. I mean, how many lives did he just try to perfect one of the paramis? It has nothing to do, the paramis has nothing to do, you know. Of course, we have to have some paramis to be able to go the path. Huh? <clears throat> We don't know what we did in the past, yeah? But we come to a place, yeah, where we know, you know, yeah? people who came to the Banta, yeah, came to see Lungta Mahabur, they had the paramis to listen to his talking, and when they were able to stay at his monastery, they had to had the paramis to at least, you know, go Sodapana Sakarakami Anakami Arahan. That was enough, yeah? I mean, the paramis, you know, bring you to these places or bring you to these teachers that can teach you the way, yeah? To get to the, to, to the enlightenment, to, to the four Arya stages, yeah? Mm. 
Okay, next question. I, I'm getting slowly tired. Are there more, many more questions? It's already one, one and a half hours already. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, Tarajan, there's still quite a number of questions. Do you, maybe I just take one or two more questions. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, next question. My mother is terminally ill. It's very distressing seeing her suffering. How can I bring peace to the heart? Thank you, Arjun. Peace to the heart, I mean, uh, there's one thing, you know, I mean, relax the music, that is one thing. But how you can peace, bring peace to her heart as a daughter or as a son, is to tell her about all the good things that she did in her life. All these small things, yeah? I mean, when, when, when you went to school, how she packed, you know, how she packed your lunch and you know, put your favorite, you know, sandwich in there. Oh, I mean, so many things, how they took you on holiday. All these little things, huh? tell her, you know, I mean, and we should be grateful for that as well. Yeah? Tell her all, about all the good things, you know, how she protected you from this, how she protected you from that, yeah. I mean, if it's your mother, she is, she is really very protective, yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, you can tell her, and, and even if you tell her the same story over and over again, you know, it is okay. That eases her mind, you know, and that, you know, that gets off the distress, eh? Because what, what people are facing, you know, at the, at, the, at the time of death is mostly, you know, they feel the guilt of all the bad things that they did. Eh? And that, of course, leads them to hell. So that's why we tell them all the good things that they did, you know, so that at least uh, that they have some balance, yeah? <clears throat> okay. Okay. <clears throat> Just one last question. Uh, does everything happen in the same present? That's a very difficult question. Yeah. Does everything? What everything? I mean, ask this person, you know, or if the person listens to it, you know, I mean, he has to clarify. I mean, things are happening in this present moment, yeah, and we act in this present moment and create karma. But does everything happen in this? I, I really don't understand. Huh? <clears throat> I mean, when you look at Nibbana, but that has nothing to do with this world, yeah? I mean, the, the past and the, and the future are there, yeah? Because it is oneness, huh? But this is something that is completely difficult to understand. Huh? Well, I have another question, yeah, I mean, this is difficult to, yeah, I mean, this person should, should clarify what he wants to know, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, feel free to raise your hand, if you can, maybe just hang on to explain what you're trying to ask. Okay, anyway, me, me know, I'll just read the next question. What is Dukkha? Where does it come from? From grief. I mean, you have to understand, Dukkha is the first noble truth. And the, and the second noble truth tells us everything about the origin of Dukkha. Wanting, not wanting. Liking, not liking, yeah? <clears throat> That's where Dukkha comes from. And you realize, you know, when you go into Samadhi, when there are no thoughts, yeah? when there are no memories coming up, there is no Dukkha, yeah? Because there is no wanting. Yeah? Or for the Arahant, yeah? There is no wanting. He doesn't want anything anymore. He's happy with whatever happens at this very moment. So he has no dukkha. Yeah. It's it's actually, you know, I mean it's actually very easy, yeah. But for us to see dukkha, you know, that is a difficult thing, yeah. Where does the dukkha yeah, <clears throat> come from? I mean you will see it, yeah. I mean, just wake up and you don't want to get up, that's where the dukkha comes from. You don't want, yeah. <clears throat> when you feel hungry, <clears throat> you don't want the, fe the, the feeling of hunger, that's why you eat, yeah? We always have these things, you know, I mean, that, that relay the dukkha, I mean, that delay the dukkha or, or make it, you know, going away. That's why we think, you know, if you do this, you know, the dukkha goes away. No, the dukkha comes with our wanting, the desire. If you want to have a lot of money, you know, I mean, it's a lot of dukkha. <clears throat> And then when you have the money, then you have a lot of dukkha because you want to keep it, yeah? 
you see, wanting is always there. Yeah. <clears throat> if you study, you now you want to go, you know, you want to get your bachelor, then you want to get your master, then you want to get your PhD, and then you want, yeah. I don't know what you want, but you want other things. Yeah. Whenever one of our desires is fulfilled, we want something else. There is no end to our desire, and the desire is that, yeah, <clears throat> tanha desire is that what your brings up dukkha. If you don't have any more desire, if you are happy, you know, with the world, how the world is or how our people is, you know, I mean, there's no dukkha. Okay, so I think I, may, maybe you know, I mean, if there are, how many more questions are there? Nine, nine more questions. Uh, that it's too long for me. I mean, what what I suggest, you know, instead of waiting for a month, you know, I mean, in in two weeks, you know, and then can can ask the questions, yeah. What yes. what do you think? Yeah, I think we can continue with the next session for yeah. those questions. Yeah, I mean, make the session, you know, make make then a intermediate session where we can answer the questions, yeah. I mean, in two weeks' time, you know, I mean, if it is convenient, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure. Do we have some, some, some questions from, from... Oh, I can answer some of the questions probably on, 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 on Monday. On Monday there is Patimok, yeah? I mean, there is Patimok, I can answer... We, we have printed them out, or? So I can answer some of the questions, yeah? So whatever is comfortable, so have a, have a good night, yeah? Or have a good morning. Wherever you, wherever you are, and don't don't uh, forget to practice every day, yeah, as much as you can, and a little bit more, <clears throat> and start the daily reflection. I know it is very difficult. Don't forget it, yeah. I see, yeah. I mean, even the monks here forget it, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot it, yeah. When I ask, you know, when I ask, oh, how is your daily? Ref oh, I forgot it. Yeah. Now, don't forget it. Yeah. Okay, so enough for enough for today, yeah? Thank you, Tanajan. Yeah, you're um, welcome. For the matter for all of us. Uh, let's all pay respects, Tanajan, together. But yeah, thanks, thanks everyone. <clears throat> The only exception, you know, if the two Indians who are leaving tomorrow have, have some questions, you know, I'll, I'll answer them. Otherwise, you know, there will be a meeting on Patimok Day, you know, and after the meeting you can ask, you can ask questions, you know, <clears throat> and I, I can answer some of these questions. We have all the ones from Sigma as well, so. Yeah. Tukka is the first one to trip. Up here. Tukang Ariya Satcha. Wanting, wanting our desire, yeah? our desire to become this. Yeah? It's the same thing, our desire to become a monk. Yeah? Yeah? It creates Tukka. Yeah? And then we can't stay as a monk, yeah? it's another Tukka. Yeah? When we become monks, you know. Yeah? If, we have, if we have just one interest, and that holds true also for the Mechis, yeah? if we have one interest to practice, I mean, then, then this life as a monk, I mean, it's, it's easy cake, yeah? There's no restraint, yeah? I mean, the Lord put a, put, didn't put any restraint on our ability to practice 24 hours a day. Yeah? But He put a lot of restraint on all the things, you know, that have to do with the world. Huh? And that's, yeah? I mean, people constantly fight with all these restraints, yeah? I mean, if you intend, if you intended on practice, I mean, then you have everything what you do. Yeah? And the Lord Buddha doesn't restrict it. He, 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 yeah. I mean, he encourages you to practice. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's no quarrel, then you know, because I, I, I mean, I remember when I came to Pantat, You know, I mean, I get, I got a kuti. Yeah. And the only thing for ten years, the only thing I knew is the sala. The, the arms round and the, and the path to my kuti. I didn't even know, you know, the other kutis around me. Because I wasn't interested. And when I went to, you know, to Namran, you know, not like you, you know, 
I mean, constantly talking, 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 yeah? I took my coffee, you know, and then, yeah, and then went back. I didn't talk to anybody because I had no interest, yeah? <clears throat> if people came, if people came to me, you know, late people came to me and asked me, where are you from, what do you do? And I said, yeah? I said, I don't know, and went, yeah? I had just no interest. I mean, all my interest, my complete interest was in practice, yeah? Doing vipassana or doing samadhi, yeah? And everything else, you know, what was going on around me, I didn't even know, I, I didn't care, yeah? But what was going on in my heart, I cared, yeah? Not what, was, what the other people are doing. I didn't care, that's their business, yeah? My business is my heart, yeah? And only after 10 years I realized, ah, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I went around and I said, oh, these are, ah, they, I know, the, the, the monk, oh, you're living there, you're living there, you're living there. Hmm? And it's also with my Tudong places, you know, I, I went to, you know, I just went into my cave, you know, and that's all what I knew, yeah? Because I was only interested in practice. But if you're interested in this, how this works, and how this works, you know, and who, uh, how, how he thinks about the sutta, or how, how he thinks about the practice here, and I mean, this is not practice, yeah? Okay, finish, yeah, let's, let's finish, I'm tired.